I want to talk about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a feast that is celebrated um, around this time, and it's the most holy day, the most important feast or festival in Judaism. However, Christians usually don't celebrate it at all. But biblically, it is a, a holy convocation. It is instituted by God. And he did so for a purpose. And that purpose has everything to do with his plan of salvation, with the work that Yeshua did. So, actually, it should be also, um, for Christians, an important day. We usually celebrate Passover and we put an emphasis there because that is when Jesus did his work on the cross. And um, in a sense, that is the most important thing. But what we usually forget is that at the Feast of Passover, Jesus fulfilled both Pesach as well as Yom Kippur. He fulfilled both feasts in that one uh, event. Pesach is all about the Exodus. We can read, of course, in Exodus chapter 12, um, how the Israelites had to put blood on the doorposts and then death would pass over and they could um, leave Egypt. And so that has to do with the sinner who is saved from death and he leaves his old life, he leaves his Egypt, so to speak. And um, Yom Kippur, however, uh, this we can read in Leviticus chapter 16, is about um, the two goats, um, where one is sacrificed for the atonement of sins and the other is sent into the wilderness. And uh, it is all about a replacement sacrifice, actually. Uh, an innocent animal that dies for the sins uh, of the nation in that case. Um, so that is not about a sinner, but about a saved one who is reconciled with God. So we see both coming together in Pesach. Um, Yom Kippur was actually foreshadowed by Abram when God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac and then provided a replacement sacrifice a ram that was caught in the bush. And we see also when Jesus stands before Pilate, it is Jesus, Yeshua HaMessiah on one side and Yeshua Barabbas on the other side. Both two men named Yeshua, one innocent and one guilty. One died for the remission of sins. Um, there are many pictures and templates that God has given us to, to show to us, to explain his plan of redemption. And unfortunately, as Christians, we often um, miss a lot of that because we, we, yeah, we think they are Judaic or something, or they have been replaced by a new covenant. But uh, yeah, new, the new covenant is not a replacement, but a fulfillment, a completion of the old covenant. If we look at um, the... the template of the tabernacle and, and I would recommend that you watch our videos on that we did an extensive study on that but when you um, enter would enter the sanctuary the first thing you would uh, see is the uh, altar of burnt offering that is the altar where uh, the sacrifices were being made and um, for most of the people uh, children of Israel, that was the only thing they, they were dealing with. They were coming in, they were bringing the sacrifice, and they were going out again. For the priests, it was a different thing. They would go on into the sanctuary. So the next thing would be the laver, a washing basin, where they would cleanse their hands and feet, bef feet before they would go in. And then you would have the actual uh, tabernacle, the tent, and I don't draw it... Uh, correctly to scale, but that's the actual tent uh, divided into um, uh, the holy and the most holy, uh, separated by the veil. Inside there would be uh, the table of shoe bread, um, the menorah, and in front of the veil the altar of incense. And then behind the veil would be the Ark of the Covenant. So that are the items that we find in, um, in the sanctuary. Now if we look at this, um, we see that uh, um, the layout resembles a cross. So we can put a cross over this, and this is what it resembles. So 
it is it points in every way to the work that that Jesus has done. Interesting, if we follow the the order of um, of these items, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh is the the tabernacle, the tent itself. We have these uh, different uh, items, and the first one, the altar of burnt offering, uh, that's where. Um, uh, the, the animal is, is sacrificed um, for the sins. Uh, it, is, uh, it, it is, as we can read in Exodus, it's planted on the earth. There is no, uh, no bottom in it. I have a model here. Um, it doesn't fit in the screen because it's too big, because it's in a certain scale compared to the um, uh, Ark of the Covenant uh, here. That is uh, that represents Earth. It is um, it is where we are, and it is also where Jesus had to to come in order to bring this sacrifice. Um, this is Pesach. This is where the the um, sacrifice is being burned. Um, but if we then continue and we continue uh, through the items, also through the seven feasts, uh, Pesach, unleavened bread. Um, First fruits, uh, and then we have um, Shavuot or Pentecost, um, um, Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, I should say, and then we have Yom Kippur. The sixth feast is Yom Kippur. So we see the first feast is Pesach, the sixth one is Yom Kippur. The first is where the sacrifice is being made, the, uh, the sixth one is where the atonement is being made. Yom Kippur is Day of Atonement. The blood of the sacrifice is sprinkled on the uh, mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, atoning for the sins. And so you see that these two are connected. And as I said, uh, the altar um, of burnt offering represents earth, um, whereas the Ark of the Covenant represents heaven. Behind the veil, it is, uh, it is a picture of heaven. And uh, so if you again put a cross over it, you see the cross is planted with its foot in the earth, whereas its top points up to heaven. Um, so we see again these two uh, components here, and the cross connects, forms a bridge between earth and heaven, between us and God. That is what Jesus created, and that is why it says in Hebrews that um, yeah, we can now boldly enter into the uh, Holy of Holies. And that is why the veil was torn the moment that Jesus died on the cross. Um, the altar of burnt offering represents or points to Jesus, Yeshua, as the Savior. The um, Ark of the Covenant points to Yeshua as the mediator. Uh, Jesus has made this also clear in the Last Supper when... Um, he broke the bread, he said, eat this, this is my body, eat this. And this shows that that sacrifice, or that part of the sacrifice, was a peace offering, and not a sin offering, because a sin offering is not eaten, it's burnt completely. But um, a uh, peace offering is eaten. Uh, just as the um, Israelites, uh, when they, uh, before they left uh, Egypt, they would eat the lamb. They would put the blood on the doorpost, but they would eat the lamb. So with that, Jesus was showing them, I am that lamb, that blameless lamb. And of the blood, he says, you can read this in Matthew 26, he says, um, this is my blood that is being shed for the remission of sins. So the blood is for the remission of sins. That is the sin offering. That is what brings atonement on the Ark of the Covenant on the mercy seat of it, um, which is which is explained also in the New Testament. Jesus is that mercy seat. He is covering the sins and even removing them. So we find in the different uh, types, uh, we find uh, the, same, uh, the same explanation. And by the way, the seventh feast is the feast that follows um, Yom 
Kippur, which is Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, and that's why seven points to the tabernacle itself. So we have here a perfect model of God's complete plan of salvation uh, in this uh, tabernacle. The first feast is Pesach, and um, one, uh, the first number one, is the number of God, unity. It is one God. Uh, whereas the sixth feast is the feast Yom uh, Kippur, Day of Atonement, six is the number of men. God had to become man to make this possible. And man is redeemed by that. Now there uh, is a link between the altar of burnt offering and the um, uh, Ark of the Covenant, uh, apart from from yeah the this, this symbolic meaning. God made it also physically um, visible to the Israelites when He gives instructions to to instructions to construct all these these vessels. Uh, we we find the exact dimensions in um, in Book of Exodus. And so these two are made to scale, and what you can't see, but here inside the, the altar of burnt offering is a grate on which the uh, sacrificial animal would be placed, and underneath are, is the coal burning. So this grate, and I can take it out to show you, uh, this grate, the height of the grate inside this um, altar is the exact same as the height of the mercy seat that would be on the other end of the sanctuary, deep inside the most holy place. So they are on the same level. There where the sacrifice is being made is, is where the blood is sprinkled. They are linked, they are connected. And so Yom Kippur uh, is the day, uh, the one day in the year that the high priest would go into the most holy place to sprinkle this blood on the east side of the, uh, the mercy seat and um, then he would come out and this would be the, the most exciting moment when he would come out because this meant that atonement was being made it was completed and so our high priest yeshua hamasiah jesus christ he went up to heaven to the most holy place um, when he ascended and um, we are waiting for his return now there are two things uh, his return as coming out of the sanctuary, returning to earth, that is the second coming. That is um, when full redemption is being given, um, and in particular to the children of Israel, to the remnant. Uh, and uh, with that, God will conclude his, his covenant that he made with Abraham. Uh, that happens uh, um, at the end of the age. Uh, the second coming is also the end of the seven-year tribulation. We can find the sequence in uh, the book of Revelation. And uh, it is uh, in the feast cycle that we celebrate every year. Yom Kippur is seven days after um, Yom Teruah, after Rosh Hashanah. I say Rosh Hashanah only for ease of recognition, but uh, Yom Teruah is the proper name, actually. Um, Yom Teruah is two days or one long day, and then there are seven days in between, and then there is Yom Kippur. It's ten days all in all, but there are seven days in between, and this points to the seven-year tribulation, where um, Yom Teruah is at the beginning, the Feast of Trumpets, which points to the rapture, and uh, the Yom Kippur, the second coming, the end of the age is at the end of the seven years. So also here the picture is perfect. It is a perfect fulfillment of God's plan of salvation through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.